Welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And the subject of this one is the fact that SNP tell lies. It's no new one really, is it? Now, this story is a cracker because this is about the WhatsApp debate and it came to light last night that a guy on Twitter, I'll we'll just give him his proper juice here, Sam Taylor, which is at Stay Lorish. I would suggest you go and follow him. I'll put a link to some of his stuff in the description so you can um, go and see his work. He's um, quite thorough. <laughs> now, what Sam had done, Sam, like the rest of us, had heard this fable of the SMP and WhatsApp messages. And he'd heard all these stories that we had about how they were not, first of all, we're not going to, we're not going to delete them. No, we'll give, we'll give them all to COVID. Remember, that was Nicola Sturgeon standing at a press conference about two years ago, telling us all, we'll give, give everything, we'll give them all the WhatsApps, everything. We also, with a terms of useless, he's, sorry, Yusuf, he's been doing the same. He's been crying about um, giving his, you know, full transparency from his party, and his government, all this nonsense. And then one by one, we've seen them all trotted in front of the COVID inquiry. And almost verbatim, they all suggested the same. And we got this new buzzword of salient points trotted out. Now, the way this story went was, there was a couple of things they all said. They were only doing what they were told to because of government policy dealing with electronic messages. And what they told us was, they would, if they had discussions and there was anything on them that, became decision-making and part of a decision-making process, they would lift those and salient points and put them onto a central database. That's what we were told. Almost every single last one of them, Swinney, Hamza, Nicola Sturgeon, Freeman, they all tracked off the same party line, which seemed awful well rehearsed. And... They were all asked, you know, what would you do? Oh, yeah, I, you know, I took off my salient points for any um, meetings, uh, any discussions that we had, which led to a decision being made, and we put them onto this central database, which was called the Erdem Electronic Records and Document Management System. They all told us that, every single last one of them. Now, prior to that, Sam Taylor had put in a Freedom of Information request back on the 30th of November. I'll give you an idea of what he asked, and I'll put it up on the screen for you as well. Simple question. From the period 1st of January 2020 to date, please provide a monthly breakdown of the number of WhatsApp messages sent or received by former First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, which were transferred to the Scottish Government ERDM system. Please understand WhatsApp messages to also include messages in any other similar direct messaging application. Now that's, that's quite um, a good question in the way he's put it, because like the rest of us, we were probably at this point unaware that Nicola Sturgeon also had private messages through X, normally known as Twitter, which became evident during the um, inquiry and her evidence given. So, Sam sent away his Freedom of Information request and get told, they didn't have any information to give. And in response to your request, the Scottish Government stated the following, while our aim is to provide information wherever possible, in this instance, the Scottish Government does not have the information you ask for, because the Scottish Government does not, as a matter of course, record the type of medium used for every communication, and it is not a requirement of our records management plan. This is a formal notice under section 17.1 of the FOISA that the Scottish Government does not have the information requested. So that's what you get told this first one back in November. You then, on the 20th of January 2024, you requested a review decision on the grounds that it provided inaccurate information. Given what was disclosed at the UK COVID-19 inquiry on the 19th of January 2024, we now know the Scottish Government did have the information I requested. It should have responded by telling me that the number was zero for each month since January 2020. 
the FOI response should be reissued with the accurate information. Well played. So, they've got a bit cute by saying they don't hold that information when they don't have it, and having zero is actually the same thing. But coming out and saying she never saved any of them is far more incriminating than saying we don't have that information. Are you with me? Scottish government saying we don't hold that information. Now it became public knowledge that they, and they all claimed that this ERDM system was used. So, the final response Sam got was dated yesterday, 14th of February 2024. In my review of the case, I have concluded that the original decision should be confirmed without modifications. Information is considered to be unrecorded if it can only be inferred by the absence of recorded information, as is the case here. There you go. Therefore, the formal notice under Section 17.1 Information not held of FOISA was, in my review, correctly applied in this instance. Under our duty to advise and assist, I can confirm the answer is zero. But then they just stop there. They then had the last paragraph, which is usual SMP nonsense where they try and sugarcoat everything. For your interest, I wish to make you aware that on the 25th of January 2024, the First Minister announced that he has commissioned an externally led review into the use of mobile messaging apps and non-corporate technology in the Scottish Government to be followed by a wider internal review of records management. So, it's like a shit sandwich. Say we're no bad, give you a bit of bad news and then tell you we're no bad again. And they're trying to suggest that, you know, this is a good thing. That the new First Minister has announced this and, you know, is a good guy. Right. That's not where the story ends. So, Sam Taylor had put this out uh, last night about, you know, this response. And it was a response to his FOI about Nicola Sturgeon. Now, I've just gone to Sam's timeline. And where are we? Um, right, so we put out the Nicola Sturgeon one first, and then followed that up an hour later with another four responses. Sam hadn't only put in one FOI request, Sam had put in five. The only thing he changed was Nicola Sturgeon's name, took it out, then another FOI request asking for the details of someone else. So, he would have got the same four responses in, uh, from his, in November. Um, and obviously, he asked the same question in the 20th of January once we'd all been to the COVID inquiry. So, he got the exact same response back, which had this part in it. I can confirm the answer is zero. That none of these people took information from WhatsApp or any other uh, similar um, messaging system and put it into this central database that they all told us that was what they were doing, right? So an hour later, after obviously this caused a bit of a sushi on Twitter, he then put out this one, which he asked for messages received by Hamza Yousaf. The next one was from John Swinney. The next one was from Kate Forbes. And the next one from Jean Freeman. Every single last one of them, with the possible exception of Kate Forbes, all said the same. I would take the salient points, that became their buzzword. I put it in the database. This man's efforts since November to unearth the truth find them telling us lies again. Now, telling lies and being economical with the truth and committing perjury in yourself. These are these are all slightly different things. And there is a chance that they might not have told, committed perjury because of the cuteness of wording. That's it. But you and I, the people of Scotland, were led to believe that these people governing our country two years ago were going to keep all their WhatsApps. 
Then when it became apparent they hadn't, they had deleted them. By the way, for a policy that nobody really knows. You know, Alex Salmon spoke about it and he said, John Swinney said he's had that policy since 2007. Alex Salmon said, well, I was the first minister for 2007 to 2014. That was never a policy. And what's up when he came out? Till six years after 2007. So they've all set us up out to believe that this is what we've done and why we've done it. And to a man, and a woman, they let us believe as a Scottish public that when they were discussing anything, decision making through these things, WhatsApps and things, the stuff would be taken out and put in a central database and not one of them done it. Not one of the dirty lying, two-faced scoundrels that run our country done what they told the Scottish people they'd done. Now, if you want to defend them, ah, but, you know, she never technically said this under oath. That's fine. I, I'm perfectly happy to accept that. But that was an inquiry onto COVID. What I'm talking about is lying to the Scottish public, media, bereaved families. Now, whether they committed perjury or not is a totally separate thing to me. We now know that that gang of thieves told us all lies. There was zero messages from any single electronic means, WhatsApp, direct messages and Twitter. None. Zero. Nanty. Since 2000, January 2020 until today, recorded in the manner they told us they did. These people should be ashamed of themselves. But they have no shame. They're, they're, they're actually um, beyond the pale. You could not give them a redneck with a branding torch. Humza, even in the, the thing that they've sent to this man, Sam Taylor, explaining it's zero, ah, but, you know, this wee last paragraph, but, you know, the First Minister's holding a, a full external inquiry into this stuff. He was doing it as well. So, and, and what is this inquiry going to do? Hee-haw. What they will do is they'll come up with a policy from that day forward and say, uh, you know, mistakes were made, and we'll probably cry. We'll do that. We'll have a wee tear. Mistakes were made, and you know, but we've learned from it, and we move on. Nothing. Nothing will happen. The only possible thing that could happen is if the QC, sorry, that was questioning these vagabonds was um, as cute as I think he has, and he's got them all to admit that they used a policy that didn't exist, and that is a potential that could come back and bite them in the ass, right? But this flower not shite, but Humz, ah, but Humz is, Humz is going to have an inquiry into all this. Ah, yeah, I Like what? He's a liar. He don't deserve to be in power. And I hope the Scottish uh, electorate on the upcoming Westminster's, Westminster elections horse you out the door. You're claiming we are going to get 40 seats. Yes, by a polling company you've gave £5 million to over the last 12 months. All the normal polling com companies see you around about the mid-20 mark, low to mid-20s, right? I hope it's less than that, because that's what you deserve. And then your levy money all stops, and your actual um, party become bankrupt. And I'm no stupid. I can see what you're doing here. National's maybe not a good word to have on our, on our, uh, our name. Is that so you can reform? Is that, your, is that the big plan is here? If he's there, run out of money because he's got horse out of Westminster, lose all the levy money. Right, forget about the short money. Short money goes in and out. If you if you get it, you spend it. If you you know if, if you don't get anybody doing it, Westminster, you don't need it to spend because it's there to cover your party costs in Westminster. But the levy money is a donation from your parliamentarians, and if that stops, your bankrupt party is even worse. So, there's our favour. Why don't you just call a Scottish election at the same time as a general election? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Give us two pieces of paper, horseshoe it twice. No one go. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, please. If you want to see more, there'll be some recommendations in the corner somewhere. And most importantly of all, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.